Hello, good morning. This is Jenny, and it is 9.30, and welcome to our um, objections for uh, listing presentations. We want you to be able to overcome any kind of objection that may pop up. And I can tell you that um, we've been doing a lot of research with consumers lately, and we want you to go in polished, um, knowing exactly what to say every time someone throws an objection your way. Um, I've heard from several sellers over the past two weeks that um, when people have to stutter uh, and think about and ponder and trip over their words whenever they have um, a comeback overcoming a listing objection, that they feel like there's no confidence in their ability. And that was a huge sign for me that we've got to get busy making sure you know exactly what to say when to say it, and more importantly, how to say it, because it's real important. Sometimes um, aggressiveness is called for. Um, most of the time it's not. Um, and, you know, Kimberly and I are going to walk you through. She is, to me, just a master of being able to um, say the right things, especially in the right tone, to get what she needs, and uh, that's why I think it's so important that um, you get to hear, you know, what she says in the middle of a listing appointment for any kind of objection that may come up. We've got 20 questions that um, we're going to, or 20 objections that we're going to kind of role play a little bit, and um, we do have a replay so that you will be able to hear this over and over. And we will also be putting together a scripts booklet for you to be able to read as you go along with um, the audio as well. If you have any questions and want further elaboration on anything that we go over today, email me. Don't text me because I'm on my cell phone. Please email me at Jenny, G-E-N-N-Y, at GetHerRealEstateLife.com so that I can be sure that your question gets answered. Everyone that is listening on the call right now is muted, so if you ask a question, we won't hear it. So make sure that you email me, and Kimberly and I will um, make sure to squeeze it, squeeze it in. Um, there are uh, lots of options whenever you overcome objections, and we don't, we don't believe that there is one way. We believe there could be two or three answers to several different questions. And um, it all is based on what your personal policy is and how you want to run your business. Um, but know that when you have those answers, um, this is your job. Um, the answer to uh, objections um, is uh, your business. Um, and that's where your expertise shines through because people are always going to have questions. They're always going to throw up um, red flags at you or they're going to push, right, especially anybody in sales. or just, People are going to push trying to get a better deal. That's what they do. And you know what you want to first do is don't be angry at them for that. Love them for that. Um, I worked with a builder one time who, when he got a really low offer on brand new construction, he goes, you know what, I love these people. They are just like me. No, this is not going to happen. But gosh, I just love the fact that they're at least trying. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, and again, you know, some of these uh, uh, answers are going to be sheer, from sheer experience of winning over and over, and some of these answers are going to be based on what we know um, sellers are frustrated with and what they want to hear. So, um, uh, Kimberly, welcome to the call. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny. I'm looking forward to this class. Um, that was a great intro, and um, I just wanted to remind everybody when they do hear our answers, these are, um, when they hear my answers, these are kind of in my style. Um, and I'm usually not aggressive, but you'll see in some of my answers I am very assertive, but um, um, usually in a soft way. And I think that um, tonality um, and having a um, a comforting tone to your words is very, very important. So I think it'll be a great call, and I'm excited that everybody's on the line. Um, well, thank you so much, and I, be I believe you're right about tonality. Um, some people can get away with, if they have an aggressive nature, um, they can say, you know, where did you get that price? But for the most um, uh, 
uh, people that you're going to sit down and talk about putting your house on the market. They're wanting to trust that you're going to take care of their best interests. So right. they want to feel like you're on their side, right, Kimberly? Yes, that's right. I think it's really important not to be com confrontational. Um, appreciate the questions that they're asking and the objections that they're throwing up, like you were talking about with the builder. <laughs> and one of my favorite sayings is um, that you can say just about anything with the right attitude and totally get away with it. <laughs> so sometimes I am aggressive even, but it's not recognized as true aggressiveness, true assertiveness, because, you know, it's said in a soft manner. So you can say anything, um, just as long as you say it with the right attitude. Well, you're right, and that will stop people, interrupt their thought patterns, and go, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. But just like what you're saying, Kimberly, is you never, ever want to make um, your seller prospect wrong. Right. You don't want to make their thinking wrong. You don't want to embarrass them in any way. You want to be respectful. And um, just like how a seller doesn't have to take any offer that's presented to him, you don't have to take any listing that you go on. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, that's exactly right. Right. And I, I completely, <laughs> we're going right, right. And I completely agree with never making the seller wrong. But sometimes, just like negotiations, you need to let them see the other side. So maybe an, maybe an agent said he was going to offer something. You need to put your seller in that agent's mind and, you know, give them a little bit of backstory, not confrontational, but, um, yeah, he probably did offer to reduce his commission because he was thinking this way. You know, it's, it's all about creating a win-win situation for everybody, just like in negotiations. Let them see the other side that maybe, um, because they're not a real estate agent, that they wouldn't immediately recognize. Right. You know, we had, um, and I share these stories with you because I think it's so important. We had um, one of our clients win against um, another agent who um, is doing whatever he can to get started, and um, he offered uh, a reduced fee, like a crazy reduced fee, He um, much lower than our client did. Um, offered to pay for staging, offered to pay for professional photography, offered to pay for a home warranty, offered to pay for a lot of different things. And um, the seller still went with our client with, um, you know, the higher commission, the um, and none of that offering. Mm -hmm. um, it's, the, it's a confidence level. So you can throw everything at people and they still won't choose you because there's a disparity there, right? Our client right. went in with confidence um, saying, you know, this is where I'm going to be able to get done for you. The other person went in with disparity saying, I'll do all of these things for you if you just please hire me. Right. Um, there is a whole... Be... Oh, I'm sorry. I was about to say they can no, always ahead, read that desperation in your voice. So not only is it a right, about the right tone and everything else, but your voice also needs to have um, needs to show that confidence level. You know, that right. they need to know that you're going to be able to take care of them. And the one last thing before we kind of get into these questions and answers, um, Kimberly's going to take the first ten. Um, and provide answers to those, and I'm going to take the next 10 and provide answers to those. Um, if you don't hear one of the objections you've been waiting to hear, then email me so that we can we can line it up. Um, but the, the final thought that um, I will give you is one of our clients um, actually charges more than the market for um, commission and takes marketing fees up front. And, um, very confidently does that, um, wins most every single one uh, uh, that, you know, he goes on. He went on, um, I think he got uh, 40, set, at last count we had, he got 47 out of 48 listing appointments. Um, and so wins all the time, but says, you know what, my, my marketing plan works this well. Um, my house is selling an average of this many days. These are the things that we do for you. This is how we negotiate. And there, that confidence level is what a seller is looking for, um, mm -hmm. just really knowing how to lead that client. So I, I want you to realize that you don't have to discount if you don't want to. There are things that 
you can say no to. And um, some of these things that you're going to hear today are answers that our clients have given in tough question situations um, uh, where you probably haven't thought about saying no before. And I'm so proud of the clients for saying no and standing up for themselves because they've actually um, won a whole lot of self-respect and uh, money <laughs> and, uh, you know, that confidence to power through. Um, and that, you know, when you feel powerful, you can do anything. So, um, Kimberly, you ready to get started? I am ready. <laughs> All right. So the first listing objection that we hear all the time is, well, Kimberly, another agent said he'd do it for a lot less. Well, you know, Jenny, I hear that all the time, quite honestly, but the truth is I'm not interested in buying your listing for less. I'm interested in getting your home sold fast and for top dollar. Some agents, they want more listings to get more calls, um, quite honestly. So it doesn't do you any good just to have your house listed. You and I both want it sold, and that's um, my expertise. Um, the other issue that I have with agents that automatically discount their commission or, or their um, that discount their services up front and that can't negotiate their own professional fees is that I'm afraid that when a contract came in, they would lack the negotiation skills to get your house sold for the most money. So a bigger bottom line, more walk-away dollars, that's what I want for you and that's what I can do for you. Um, I don't discount my commission, but the good news is I don't discount my services or the effort that I put into our selling relationship either. And there are big advantages um, in that for you, and you, you just really have to be concerned with someone that's going to negotiate and give away their money so quickly. Are they going to do the same thing when they get a contract on your house? I love that. And Kimberly, you also have a really good script that you've used before about, you know, um, how often do you go in and do the same work and get paid less for your efforts? Um, mm -hmm. You know, there's several different um, uh you know, things that you can use here. Um, do you want uh, me to be excited about getting your house sold? Or do you want me to be resentful that I reduced it just for you because I never do that and uh, feel like I shouldn't give you a full effort? Right. And just I mean, like the listing agent that you were talking about, with the right attitude, you can say, um, no, I, I don't do it for less because I'm worth more. <laughs> you know, like you were talking about with his stats, this is my marketing plan, this is what I do, um, I'm worth that. And, and it will reflect in, in the seller's bottom line, too, because you are right. so good. So there's nothing wrong mm -hmm. with saying in a, in a confident but not cocky way that you're good and you're, and you're worth that full fee. I love it. So, great answer. Okay, so number two, listing objection. If I buy a house from you, too, will you reduce your fee? If you buy a house from me, too, will I reduce my fee? That's really kind of a loaded question. So, the first thing, because, it, because it's two separate transactions. First, we need to get your house sold in order, and in order to attract the agents that we need to show it, I don't advise discounting the fee. So agents, we're just like everyone else, and we want to make the most money um, for you and the most money for ourselves because we work so hard to get the clients the best deal. So it really can't work that way because you're only going to be paying one fee on the sale of your house. When you buy, and I represent you as a purchaser, the seller's going to pay the fee. And rest assured, I will represent you well and get you the most money for your current house and getting you a great deal on the one that you purchased. So um, you only pay once. So that's the good news. Okay, so this question comes up all of the time. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, you've got to have your answer prepared. Um, a lot of people say, sure, why not? And you have that option of saying, sure. But I want you to know that the Code of Ethics says that you cannot tie one contract to another. And, um, you know, with my husband being a home builder, he said that he learned a long time ago, you never do one thing um, hoping the other one's going to happen because the other one never ends up happening. And then there you were stuck taking a lesser fee because then you have to go back and say, well, you ended up buying a for sale by owner or you moved into your grandmother's house or um, now you're going to have to owe me an increased fee, right? Most mm -hmm. of you are not going to be willing to do that. 
and then you got completely taken advantage of on the quote-unquote agreement where they didn't live up to their part of it. And I think so. people, um, many agents, do not realize that that's against the code of ethics to tie one contract to another. And me and you have seen so many agents get burned on this one <laughs> because because the your client forgets that they made that agreement and they all they always go and buy it for sale by owner or something that never happens. But they always get you always get burned when you do that. Right, and it's just human nature for people to look out for their own interests. Mm -hmm. They were really trying to, they were thinking, oh, you're going to make all this money, so if you do this, then I expect this. Here's the deal. Are you going to work less for one or the other? No, you're going to work just as hard on getting that house sold and then just as hard as finding the next place for the person. So they're two separate things, and I understand that um, people may think that all of that money may be going to you, but... Um, you know, you're working just as hard for two separate things. There's no need to um, reduce your fee. You're worth getting full fees for both sides of it. Now, you can, um, if you feel like you need to do something, you can always say that um, on the purchase side, you know, I'll make sure that you get, um, you know, a home warranty or but make sure that you induce that up front and it's not a rebate on the back. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, so that you're staying completely legal. Um, and maybe you want to get somebody a really nice closing gift um, because they did both sides with you. But you do not have to um, reduce um, your fees if you don't want to. If you want to, if you feel like that's the right thing to do, that's fine. But do not get angry at someone else for not um, living up to that expectation because that was your choice to risk your business that way. Um, and if it, if it happens where somebody goes and either they don't buy or um, you get their house sold and uh, uh, they buy new construction without you or they buy for sale by owner without you, um, you chose to do it that way. Um, and, uh, you, you know, you don't have to. Okay, so number three. So, Kimberly, how much are you going to spend in advertising? Well, I can tell you this. I certainly don't skimp on advertising. You should see you should see my taxes. My accountant laughed at me. <laughs> I think what you need to know is what I'm actually going to do um, to get your house sold, and there's a lot that I do. So you'll have a huge online presence. Um, your house is advertised as a fresh new home on the market that goes to over 30 plus websites and it's constantly being pushed out to even more. So it's um, shared with my other colleagues. I list it on sites that aren't just real estate related, like all the buy, sell, trade sites surrounding um, the community in which you live. I also um, do things that a lot of agents don't do. I send out zip your flyers which is an email flyer that goes to over 5,000 agents in the state, many of whom don't have access to the local MLS on which your house is listed because sometimes your buyer doesn't come from this immediate area. So I like to send it out everywhere. It also goes on my personal website, our company website. It's syndicated through Facebook and all sorts of other social media. And I even have a search feature where people can search for houses on Facebook and a personal um, home search phone app that goes out to um, tons of people. So in addition to that, I do open house on steroids. Um, sometimes that gets like 20, 30 or more people in attendance combined with a neighborhood exclusive time. Um, I also use flyers with call capture 800 numbers and uh, advertise um, my other listings on the back of your flyer that goes in your yard. And in turn, I advertise your house on the back of the flyers on all of my current listings as well. Um, there's a lot more to it too. So besides custom signs, professional sign posts, professional photography, it's all very expensive as you can imagine. I can't um, really put a dollar figure on it because I do so much. But remember, I don't get paid until I sell your house. So I pull out all the stops in the beginning and I spare no expense. Does that sound good to you? And I think that's yeah, what that's they're really asking when they ask that question. They're not really looking for, you know, do you spend $100 or $200? Of course, if you're charging a marketing fee, um, then you can put a dollar figure out on it. But they want to know what you're going to do. 
um, they want to know that you're not just going to put a, a sign in their yard and pray that it sells. And then they never hear from you again. Right, I agree. And that you're going to do something. <laughs> right, right, right. If you are making some. If you want to know what the plan is, if they're going to hire you, just like if you open a business, you need a business plan. If they're going to hire you, they want to know what your marketing plan is. So, you know, it sounds like a whole lot when I read it like that, but you know, we all have our um, we all have our marketing plans that we take to listings, and and it's easier to say when you can when you can show them everything that you can do. Um, but they just want to know what you're going to do. Right. No, I agree. That is wonderful. And then I love that. So, hey, I'm actually making this cost investment, um, mm -hmm. uh, hoping that this sells, and guess what? I want my money back. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, which is a, a great thing to add. So right. um, that, was, right. that was a good answer. Okay, so number four. You know what? I'll sign with you right now, um, Kimberly, if you'll do it for much less. Well, everything I do, I do first class and with full effort. So I'm just competitive like that, and <laughs> I'm going to make sure that you get the most money. So it, that's what it's all about, getting you the most money, and that's my fiduciary duty to you. If I did it for less, I'd have to choose to eliminate some really effective marketing that's not only useful, but absolutely necessary to get your house sold. So I can't just put a sign in your yard and hope it sells and hope I don't disappoint you. Um, if I did it for less, and, and you'll find discount services always leave my sellers discouraged. So I have to do a great job for you. <laughs> it's my reputation on, my, on the line, and it's your bottom line. So I kind of feel like anything worth doing is worth doing right, and so I can't just do that. You deserve the best that I can give. Your bottom line should be your main concern, and that's where I can really come in handy. You'll see my skills at work. Okay, great. Um, my house is in the best location, Kimberly. There's no way I'm paying you a full fee. It's really going to sell itself. Your location is perfect, and it is a beautiful house, and that's a huge selling point. But to be honest, sometimes getting the house under contract quickly is the easy part, and getting it to the closing table is where the real work comes in. And if I can just step back um, and give a little teachable moment here, I like to, when they ask questions like that or make um, comments like that, I like to give examples and show your expertise. So then I would pick up and say the last house that I listed in a location like this, I had 22 showings in the first two days. It resulted in four offers, um, a contract and a backup contract, and that multiple offer situation resulted in 24, I'm sorry, $21,000 over list price for my seller. So I kind of hope the same thing happens here. I absolutely earned my fee on that last perfect location house because the sellers were ready to take the first offer and go to bed. They, it made them nervous that there were so many, that, that there was so much activity. But I knew what was coming, and in the end, they were glad I was there. So it really wasn't like real estate on that last perfect location house. It was more like working a circus. <laughs> but my fee, I can tell you, was a lot less than the $21,000 overage that resulted in that situation. Plus, not only did we have all those showings and a contract, we had a backup contract for $1,000 less than the first contract. Um, so it worked out to be a, re a really great deal. And sometimes, with amazing houses like yours, that's where the need for true expertise comes in. And I'm already seeing the bigger picture with your house because it is awesome and the location is great. And I hope um, that you are too. I hope we can duplicate that last situation. Good answer. Okay, so number six. I'm interviewing several agents, so we'll be in touch. I really have a funny story about this one, and I'm going to tell you that in just a second. I would say... I wish I had known that because I would have tried to have been last. I was thinking um, when we were going through this process tonight that we were on the same page. Is there anything that you have questions or concerns with? I think that I've answered all of your questions, and I know that I'm the best person for the job. I also know that it's a grueling process to interview all sorts of agents every night after you come home from work. 
If you wanted to sign today, I could call the other agents and let them know that you had already made your decision. I've done that before, too. Um, so that's one thing about being in real estate. You can't be afraid to make those tough phone calls as an agent. Um, but we're all, uh, we're all um, true professionals, all the real estate agents. And you win some and you lose some. But if you think I'm the best person for the job, you can go ahead and hire me. A couple of things that I wanted you um, to remind you of is that I have an easy exit listing agreement where you can cancel at any time for any reason if you're not satisfied with my services. Um, it really is risk-free for me, um, uh, risk-free with me. And you have my references that I gave you. I gave you my broker's phone number, too, if you ever had any concerns that needed to be addressed. I just want you to know that I take my job very seriously, and there's no risk, no contract that you're locked into if you aren't satisfied, but you will be. <laughs> so the choice is yours completely. But if you think you've made your decision, I can um, start right now by taking everything else off your plate, and we can start getting your house sold tonight. The funny, I know that that sounds kind of bold, but there really is a funny, 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 funny story behind that. I went on um, a listing appointment one time, and I was the first appointment, not the last appointment, but they had several other agents lined up, and they started telling me that, um, we, well, we were talking in, in the consultation, and then the husband asked the wife to come to the kitchen, and they talked for a minute, and they came back, and they said, the truth is we have um, a bunch of other agents lined up, you know, for interviews, but um, I, wish, I wish that I hadn't had all those interviews lined up because we really do think you're the best person for the job. And they were feeling bad. They didn't want to make the phone call to the other agent or to the other agent. Um, there was one coming the next night. And I said, well, if you have made your decision, I'll be glad to call and let them know, um, you know, if your decision's truly made. Um, you don't want to waste your time interviewing another agent, and the other agent, if you've already made his if you've already made your decision, he doesn't want to come out and interview. <laughs> you know, if the decision's already made, so we can get started tonight. And they were like, "Oh, would you do that?" And so I I signed the listing paperwork right then. I got in my car and I called the other agent and said, "Hey, I just wanted to let you know that they signed with me, but they wanted me to um, call you and and tell you um, that they had done that." And so, you know, you don't need to go out there tomorrow night. And surprisingly, I did it with the right attitude. Like I said, you can say anything with the right a attitude. And the agent yeah. said, Kimberly, thank you so much for calling me. <laughs> and then I hung up the phone and, you know, kind of laughed all the way home, if you want to know the truth. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's when you feel so proud of yourself, you know. Right. Um, that that you, you know you did everything you could the right way. Um, right. Don't you hate leaving a listing appointment when you're like, oh, why did I do this? Why did I take that? Why do I agree that price? Why did I? <laughs> right, or I could have said this, or I could have said that. And sometimes you just have to, you know, um, take a big gulp and say, I'm, I'm going to say this, but, um, but you know, I'm going to make it come out in the right way and say it with the right attitude. And, and they really didn't want to interview anybody else. And... Um, you know, I would don't. Hate to, They're just like, please answer, you know, my hopes. <laughs> right. Be the person. Right. <laughs> right. And truthfully, if you were an agent, I would hate to go on an interview if, if they had already hired somebody else. You know? So yeah, it would have been terrible for them to sign the listing agreement. The other agent come and say, thank you very much for your time. We actually signed a listing agreement with Kimberly last night. <laughs> you know? Then my agent friend would have been, why didn't she call me? Right, and that actually happened to one of our clients the other day. It was a referral, and um, she was barely let in the front door. And she said, I would have much preferred a phone call ahead of time saying, you know, we're going in a different direction. Right. Um, Absolutely. Because so. it takes a whole lot of preparation time going in, into a listing appointment. Yes, I remember one of my personal coaching clients actually had that happen to them, too. So, so yeah, just, just say it. Okay, so number um, seven, I'm not doing a thing to fix up this place, Kimberly. You're going to have to sell it just how it sits. Well, that's kind of challenging. If, if that's how you feel, I will try to do it. But let me just give you a couple of things to, to think about. In order for you to get top dollar, you need to be the best price house, and it needs to be in the best condition. So sometimes a small repair, just a small repair, can yield huge payoffs in the sale price. I certainly 
wouldn't want you to over improve your house so that you don't recoup your money. I'm not going to let you do that. On the other hand, I've had clients look at things so black and white before that they have bought back their house over a $200 repair. And, you know, that just doesn't make very much sense. So we can advertise it like that if you feel that strongly about it. But remember, we're not a seller disclosure disclosure state. We're a buyer beware state. And sometimes um, a listing that as is, seller will make no repairs, don't even ask, that kind of listing, it makes buyers think you're trying to hide something more. So you need to know that almost all contracts, advertised like that or not, are contingent on financing and home inspection. So I wouldn't want a, a buyer to walk away after a home inspection over a minor repair without even asking um, you to fix it or for you to buy back your house um, for a minor repair because we didn't keep a somewhat, just a somewhat, open mind about it. And I think that that's the kind of thing that you need to tell them if, you know, if because really, if, if they let it go over a $200 repair, then you've actually bought your house back for $200. And that's what I like to, um, you know, to tell, my, to tell my sellers. Well, and they're going to have to expect a really low ball offer. Mm-hmm. Um, because people sure. want fresh. And, um, you know, even if, if, even if a buyer wants to go in, and you know this, I'm talking to, to professionals here, um, but even if a buyer wants to go in and remove walls, they still want to know that that house was clean, that um, it was picked up, that it was clutter-free, um, and that, you know, somebody loved it at some point. So <laughs> unless they're an investor, they want it to be beat up, they want it to be cluttered up, they want it to be junked up, they want, um, you know, yeah. marks on the floors and the walls because they're going to come in and lowball you with cash. And exactly. you'll be desperate enough to take it. So that's a, a great way to, to say it as that's well. Right. Investors want it stinky because they think it smells like money that way. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> so funny. Okay, so number eight is um, another agent said I could sell it for a lot higher. Well, like I was talking about earlier, um, some agents are just interested in buying your listing versus selling your house. So I want to sell it for you. The most important time on the market is the first 30 days. If you aren't priced right from the start, you have missed a crucial window of opportunity. So in this web-based, online, need-to-know-now world that we live in, if a house is on the market for over 30 days, it's considered old. So don't make the mistake of overpricing your house. If you do, in a buyer's mind, they think, um, people have looked at this house every day for 30, 60, 90 days or longer, and they didn't want it. So what's wrong with me? Because I kind of do. <laughs> so you can price it high, and then you can reduce it at day 60, 90, or 100, the 120-day mark. But that's, ask, that's like asking for a second chance to make a first impression. It never works out like it could have worked out. So I'm not going to leave your hard-earned money on the table. But if I told you I could sell it for a lot higher just to get the listing, then I would sorely disappoint you in the months to come, and I can't do that. So comps, they're in black and white. It's pretty scientific at how we come to the price range that I've suggested. So I have to begin this relationship having the integrity to tell you the truth from the very start so that you're not disappointed in the whole process and disappointed in me later. Pricing too high, pricing yourself out of the market, and having people decide online before they've even seen your house that you're overpriced is exactly how dollars are left on the closing table that could have been yours. So the first 30 days are more important, um, um, and that's why I've suggested this price. Ooh, my favorite line in there was that I have, you know, that's why I have the integrity to tell you the truth up front so I won't disappoint you later. That is good. Yes. Yes. Um, and, you know, there is a guy in Atlanta who always uses the um, script, um, listen, you're not going to choose me. He just starts off the whole conversation. You're not going to choose me. If you're interviewing other agents, you said you were, then you're going to choose someone else that tells you they can sell it for hire. 
So I always know that I never win the first time around because I am straight up honest on exactly what you can expect to get as far as an offer. Other people are going to tell you higher because they just want so badly to put a sign in your yard. I don't. And I wish I could tell you that you're going to be smarter than the average seller, but all the research shows that you won't be. <laughs> <laughs> I, I kind of love because he has a, you know, he's very professional, but he has like a, a tone of sarcastic, um, you know, in him and a, a little bit of aggressiveness, but yet people just love and warm up to him. He, and he yeah, says that's, that's okay. That yeah. <laughs> I love that. that. And so then he comes in the second time around, if he didn't get it the first time around, and he looks like the hero. But the truth is, if he says, um, you know, if, if he insinuates that, you know, surely you're smarter than this, they're going to they're gonna list with him. So that's all. Right. I love that's that. right. <laughs> I know. It's, I mean, but all the research says that you're not going to be smarter than the average person <laughs> because mm-hmm. you want to hear that higher price. And then they're raising their hand, I am smarter than the average person. (laughs) Right. (laughs) That's fabulous. But that's okay. I'm going to take your phone call whenever this house doesn't sell the first time. And I'm going to be there for you. That's what Mm -hmm. I specialize in. So, um, you know, I wanted to throw that one in because I absolutely love what you said. Um, But, you know, everybody has perspective, and we all do business a little bit differently. So, Mm -hmm. um, And that's like we were talking about in the intro. Um, You know, put in the seller's mind what that other agent's thinking. You know, um, what his MO is, why he would say something like that. You know, you have to let them see the other side, and that's exactly what he did. So that's awesome. (laughs) Um, Okay, so here's one that um, we also hear often is, um, listen, Kimberly, I'm only signing a 30-day agreement. You've got 30 days to sell this house. Oh, 30 days. Okay. I appreciate the fact that you know that I work fast. I really do. (laughs) But that's even pretty um, unrealistic for me. If we got your house under contract today, some loans take 30 to 45 days to close. So I would ask for a little more time. But... Why don't we compromise on this? Better yet, let's sign a three-month um, listing agreement with an easy exit listing agreement addendum. Remember I talked about that? Seller can cancel at any time for any reason without cost or obligation prior to an acceptable contract. That way, it's completely risk-free, risk-free for you in case I don't do what I say, which I will do what I'm going to say. And we don't have to redo your listing every 30 days. Um, so I think that would be a good option for both of us, don't you? Absolutely. So and with that one. easy exit listing agreement, um, you know, sometimes we say on the easy exit listing agreement, seller can cancel at any time for any reason without cost or obligation, except a five hundred dollar marketing fee or you know two hundred and fifty dollar marketing fee, whatever it is. Um, so you can throw your marketing fee in there. But it's a good way. Um, it's a good way to compromise. I like it. Okay, so we hear this one all the time, mainly because there are agents around um, promoting this. Uh, if you bring the buyer, Kimberly, will you sell it for less? Well, if I bring the buyer, I promise to represent you well. I can't discount my fee um, just because of that. Let me tell you how I think. In my mind, I would deserve a bonus <laughs> because I'm competing with um, 3,500 or more agents in our MLS area to sell your home and to market your home. So my job as the listing agent um, is to market the house to them and to represent your best interest. If I bring a buyer, my job just got a lot harder because I find I may find myself in a position where I represent you both, where I have to kind of quarterback for both teams, and that takes a lot of expertise and a lot of skill. So as I've said before, you and I are most concerned with your bottom line. If I brought the buyer, that means I really went above and beyond um, competing against those 3,500 real estate agents to do so. So there's so much more to negotiate in a real estate contract besides my fee, and I'll show you that I can effectively do that. This is how I make my living. Um, So your boss probably wouldn't ask you to work for less, right? And if he did, um, this is a loaded question, would you perform your task like you ordinarily would? So that's a tough question. I will represent you well, and I will, and that will reflect in your net 
in your net proceeds, um, and that I that I did a remarkable job for you. Okay, so no, I won't be willing to do that. Right. And um, now some of you may say, you know what, absolutely, yes, but the likelihood of me bringing that buyer is going to be very little. And I can tell you sellers are frustrated with this. They feel like they expect you to bring the buyer personally because we're not educating people um, in the listing presentation. So um, even if they don't ask this question, you want to make sure that the li you tell them that the likelihood of you providing the buyer is going to be, um, you know, a very small percentage. Um, just let that, you know, let them know up front that your job is to market it not only to buyers directly, but also to other agents to bring their clients that they have already. Yes, that's um, a good point. You really, really need to let them know because we hear it all the time. Um, my house has been shown and you haven't even shown my house, you know, one time. They need to know that your job is to market their house, and, and they don't unless you tell them up front. Right. One of the things I used to always say is, listen, I believe on being uh, on one person's side the entire time through the transaction. I want you to know that I am on your side. I don't like things to cloud the um, waters, to muddy the waters. And if I bring the buyer, it's going to get cloudy. You're going to think that I'm trying to talk you into things so I can make double commission. And um, I'm going to tell you here today that my goal is stay on your side. So I will probably not ever show it, and I will probably not ever bring the buyer. And people were like, oh, they never thought of it that way. And so if I did bring, um, if I actually did end up showing it myself, I would explain to them how I got them because of the marketing that I was using. So um, great script to be able to be really clear on expectations with your with your clients. Otherwise, um, you've heard me tell the story about how I was at a church retreat, um, a grace retreat, and I heard a lady tell a room full of like, you know, 10 or 15 women that her agent wasn't doing a thing. And I said, wait a minute, you told me you had two offers that you were negotiating and trying to decide which one to take. And she said, yeah, but my agent didn't bring any of it. <laughs> so... <laughs> I had to, that was a teaching moment for her, but we have to tell our sellers this up front. So, okay, so Kimberly, if you want to go ahead and switch up and um, ask me number 11 and we'll continue on. Okay, so I'm a seller. So, Jenny, how many house, how many open houses are you going to do for me? Okay, you can answer this question either way. You know, Kimberly, that's an excellent question. Most sellers think that open houses really work to sell their home. Unless it's a very special large event that's planned out weeks in advance, there's really no research at all to support that open houses sell your current home. It does help the agent meet new people to sell other homes, though. So I make it a point to um, not kick you out of your home for two hours on a Sunday for something that normally won't bring us the right buyer. Instead, I focus on other marketing that will guarantee a buyer for us. Is that okay? Yes, I didn't realize that. That sounds good. All right, or you can answer this way. Oh, gosh, I am so glad you asked that question, Kimberly. In fact, one of my best promotions is the open house on steroids. I will be planning for your house. Um, now, keep in mind, it takes a few weeks for us to be able to get all of this planned, um, and the only way it works effectively is if we have a lot of people in here. So I'm going to really need your help promoting it um, by inviting your friends, your coworkers, and all of your social media contacts. Uh, we will theme the event and highly publicize it. And you'll get a detailed report about the theme, my budget, and the promotion schedule. Does that sound okay? Oh, that sounds like a lot of fun, actually. <laughs> Good. And I'll have to say that um, Jeremy Dobbs did get 20 couples in his open house yesterday. That's an open mm -hmm. house on steroids. So. <laughs> yes, he always does a great job with that. That's awesome. Um, yes. Okay, so go ahead. Okay. So, Jenny, um, I'd like to have your whole office come look at it. I've heard of agents doing that before. Oh, you know, Kimberly, I can really appreciate why you think that this is a great idea. But I can tell you that the best agents who are selling property every day do not have the time to stop by. They rely on the MLS and um, a selling property hot sheet that they pick up every single day so that they can study the market 
and um, that helps them find the properties for their buyers just right away. The only agents that are going to show up if we invite the whole office to come over are the ones that actually just dabble in real estate. So I'm not going to waste your time or my time with that. Is that okay? Oh, yes. Um, yeah, that makes sense. Huh? Yes. I only want it marketed to busy agents. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> well, people who actually sell it. Okay. Right. Okay. Um, so, Jenny, how many houses have you sold in this neighborhood? And you can answer this in um, either way. Um, I actually sell homes in this neighborhood regularly, and here are the addresses the previous homes I've sold in your neighborhood and in surrounding areas. Okay, that's if you do. More likely than not, you're not going to be um, someone that um, has ever sold a house in that neighborhood, so you can answer it this way. You know, Kimberly, that is a great question. I've actually never sold a home in your neighborhood because I work the entire city. Um, my buyer clients, um, ha you know, haven't actually requested this neighborhood because my marketing is always highly focused on the houses that I do have for sale. So what I've learned by working all parts of the city and all neighborhoods and surrounding areas is that my marketing is so detailed, we bring in a lot of buyers, not just for that one house, to that certain area. So I'm confident that we'll have the same success here in your neighborhood. Okay, that sounds good. That's a great answer. Okay, um, so Jenny, you just don't seem to have um, the inner, the same internet exposure that the other agent has. Okay, um, well let's talk about that just for a minute. Is this opinion based on research of my name on the internet or from uh, the agent's presentation? You see, unless you search my property addresses, you probably won't find much of me on the internet at all. And the reason being is I spend all of my advertising budget on marketing my listings, not me. In fact, my listings reach over a thousand different websites, and that doesn't include my social media marketing. Um, would you rather have your property exposed or my business? Oh, no, I'd rather you market my property. <laughs> That's okay, answer. and um, this is an answer that you need to take. One of our agents was um, told this a couple of weeks ago, saying that they chose a different agent because of their Internet presence. Um, here are some, a couple of tips here that you can go on to say. I um, uh, subscribe to List Hub, which puts it out to 900 different websites alone. And then I also um, have uh, Zillow profiles and Realtor.com preferred profiles so that your listing gets extra attention on these sites as well. Um, not to mention my own personal website, our company's website, and our social media, media marketing. Okay, so that you can take that one step further. Um, and what I said again was the list hub. So, all right, let's keep rolling. Okay. Um, the thing is, we have a great friend who's an agent. Okay. Um, I can understand you wanting to help your friend. You are just so sweet wanting to give them business. And, gosh, I, I would be lucky to, to be your friend. But will you be able to tell him or her the tough stuff during the process? I mean, it's extremely stressful putting your house on the market. If your friend isn't working really hard to promote your property, I mean, are you going to be able to tell him or her that you're disappointed? Um, and that you expect more. Your friend will also learn a lot of personal details that you may want to keep private. Um, if you feel like I'm not living up to your expectations, you can easily fire me, um, but it won't be that easy with a friend. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, that's a great um, yeah, you never want to you never want to ruin a friendship over over a sale. And sometimes they have a friend that's an agent, and um, and their friend doesn't doesn't sell many houses either. You know, um, so yeah, that's that's a really that's a really good point. Well, and you can even throw stuff like this in. I mean, the first time that um, uh, your friend goes to. Uh, uh, work out at the gym during a work day. Is that going to mm -hmm. tick you off? Because your friend's going to share that with you. The first time your friend stays home with a sick child all day, is that going to upset you, feeling like your friend's not working on that listing? Um, I don't have those issues. 
right? Mm-hmm. And um, for me personally, I had a house listed with my best friend. I had her house listed. And another person called and asked me all about the house. And I said, oh, it's got this, that, da, 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 da. this is the asking price of it. And listen, he said, well, that seems really kind of high. And I said, well, you can always make an offer if you want to, right? That's our standard <laughs> right. That's our mm-hmm. standard answer, and um, I knew the uh, I knew the house was worth what we were asking. That's our standard answer to make somebody feel comfortable. I mean, right. not five minutes later, my phone rings from my best friend. I don't appreciate you telling people that they can just make an offer on our house. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. And so I immediately said to her, "You know, uh, my friendship with you is way more important." than um, selling this house and the little bit of money that I'm going to make on it. So if you feel the need to make a change um, because you don't trust what I'm saying, then please, please do so. And she was like, no, no, I trust you. Um, so these are things that you can share. You, you all have your own personal stories that you can share with a seller about that friend deal. So, mm-hmm. okay. okay. And I mm-hmm. love the part that you said about um, that friend getting – getting all in your business <laughs> because yeah. as a buyer's agent, we have all probably had friends that didn't buy from us because they thought we were privy to all of their financial information and things like that. So so that's a great line too. Um, okay, Jenny, um, my mom is a real estate agent who's pretty much retired, but will you give her a referral fee? Mm-hmm. I love this one. <laughs> um, you can answer either way. Um, Yes, of course, Kimberly. I will be happy to send her a referral fee of 20%. Please have her call me and provide me with the proper paperwork. Okay, put the work on her. <laughs> if you decide right. that you want to do that, it's completely fine to choose to do that, but be clear on what it is, how much it is right up front. Or you can go ahead and say this. Oh, gosh, Kimberly, I'm so sorry. Our broker only allows us to send referral fees to agents or brokers that provide paperwork to him or her prior to working or even meeting with a client. I'm so sorry. Mm-hmm. Or here's another answer. <laughs> oh, that's great. Your mom's an agent. She can really help us work through this process together. I'm really sorry, though, that I can't provide her referral fee. My policy is to only pay referral fees to agents who have specifically chosen me to give business to. So I'm sure you can appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Very good. You know, it's all in how you say it. And, you know, I, my husband is a diehard negotiator. When people, when people tell him, hey, that's my policy, and I'm sure you can appreciate that. He does, which is funny mm-hmm. because, you know, he's kind of one of those cutthroat negotiators. So, um, mm-hmm. it's again, it's like Kimberly says, it's how you say something. Okay. Go ahead. Right. And all salespeople love a good salesperson. <laughs> so. Oh, that's true. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, Jenny, I appreciate you, but we're thinking we may want to go with a team instead of just a single agent. Okay, I can definitely understand why teams, you know, may interest you. However, many customers complain about the communication received from a team. Most of them are all so busy that they have problems knowing, um, you know, what the right hand is doing from the left. So you can ensure that I will stay on top of everything and can personally provide better attention and service. Um, Is that something that you'd be more interested in? You know, I I didn't think about that. I do kind of like communicating with just one person. Now, good. Okay, so if you have a team, you already know exactly what to say. They're not going to say this to you. But I have had, we have had a lot of objections from single agents lately about um, wanting to choose a team. This is one thing that you can say to to overcome that. Um, And, again, you don't want to talk negatively. You're just giving an option. Right, right. And if I can just add, if you are a team, um, Make sure make sure that the communication um, um, happens seam- seamlessly. Instead of um, sometimes in team situations, they'll say, "Well, um, the other guy or the other girl told me this." <laughs> so you need to be careful about that if you are a team. That's right. So true. That you're on the same page at all times. Okay, Jenny. Um, I really need to get fifty thousand dollars out of the house to put towards my new house. I can respect that for sure, Kimberly. I will do whatever we can to get the most out of your sale. But you have to understand what you need for the next house is a separate issue. Just to make sure you know exactly what to expect 
what you get at closing is strictly based on your payoff and what a buyer is willing to pay for the property. There's just no way to guarantee that you will get the money you need for your own down payment. Now let's talk about all of your options for you to be able to um, get a down payment elsewhere. Okay. okay. So They're just looking for the money, and that's the only thing that they can think about. So, you know, sometimes we just have to sit down and say, what are all your other options? Right. Right. And what they need out of their house um, has nothing to do with the market value, you know, or what a buyer is um, willing to pay. And sometimes you have to, you know, think of a, a really nice way to say that. That that comes up all the time. That's a great answer. Um, okay, Jenny, I have two people that told me if I ever sell this house, they want to buy it. So if they buy it, can I leave the commission off that? Okay, and I'm going to take this straight from April Sharp. You can answer either way. Sure, I'll be happy to exclude their names from our agreement. If they buy, you can take the lead and close it out without paying me a commission. Um, but you can also even add to that. Um, you can also um, say, uh, in that event, um, you won't have to pay me a full commission, but I'll close it out for, you know, half or a small percentage or a flat fee. You know, you can add those things in if you want to. Um, or you can answer it this way. You can say, you know what, I really appreciate you asking, um, but once I start marketing a property, I spend a lot of money and a lot of hours of effort. I definitely want to ensure my efforts pay off just like you do. Uh, I'm happy to work with any person um, who may have interest in the property, but I do have a policy against listing exclusions. Mm -hmm. And April said that the other day, and guess what? It worked in her favor. Um, so you don't have to say yes, and I'm so proud of her because she's like, no, nope, I'm, I'm tired of, of, of having to do stuff like that. Um, so, and then just think about how proud you are, right? You're just like, yeah, I won. <laughs> That's right. And then you do feel like the negotiator, you know? And, yes, and I think you sellers really need to see that. They need to see that, you know, you're kind of tough like that. So good job, April. Um, yeah. Okay, Jenny, we want to ask a lot more, um, we want to ask, we want to ask a lot more money because people can always just make an offer. I completely understand your thinking, Kimberly. And yes, a buyer will definitely come and make an offer that's going to be less than your, your asking price for sure. Um, most buyers always start low because they're trying to get a deal. Everybody, every buyer wants a great deal. But a skilled agent will always negotiate them back up to the asking price or somewhere near it. Um, our goal is to get buyers inside so they're excited to make an offer. My strategy is to price it just below market so that it starts a frenzy and you get the highest possible price. Remember, you don't have to take any offer at all that is presented to you. Uh, but I can tell you that my strategy works because we got the sellers at 123 Main Street, $25,000 more. The sellers at 350 Cute Boulevard, $5,000 more. And the sellers over at 12 Divine Highway, $2,500 more. Of course, I, you know, I cannot guarantee that um, this is the uh, uh, price is the magic one, though. So, um, you know, all I can say is uh, we will watch it and um, be able to put the best possible price moving forward on it so that you have the best audience, and then we can hold tight to that asking price. Mm -hmm. That sounds good. Or here's, here's another one, and this is what um, one of our previous clients uh, used to say, and actually I think it's pretty genius if you want to try either one. I'm a, I've always been more comfortable with this is the price. <laughs> But mm -hmm. um, I can see why I probably lost out on, um, you know, a few more listings that uh, I probably could have represented if I had taken this approach. Um, but you can, you can say this instead. I prefer hitting the market on the, the definitely the high side of reasonable to be certain that you're not leaving $1 on the table. But I like to go ahead and get all of your price reductions scheduled ahead of time. If I don't, you'll be stuck in overpriced land. And the last thing I want to do is to beat you up for price reductions after I leave here. If we aren't getting any activity within two weeks, we need to immediately drop the price. And the reason why is because buyers want fresh. They know the market better than we do. They've been stalking it online. 
So seven days can sometimes uh, make your house stale in this market. It's crazy. Um, this new digital age is fast. So let's go ahead and find these automatic reductions now so that we're not left behind and that you never have to fear that you left a dollar on the table. Yes, I love that. I love the high side of reasonable. Um, but sometimes the agents will go in and they'll use the high side of reasonable script, but then they only, they're, they're, they're bold, but only half as bold as they need to be. So don't use the high side of reasonable script without, without getting the automatic price reductions, <laughs> you know? So, so if right. you're going to be bold, be bold all the way through. That's, um, that's excellent. And then that lets the seller know that you are, you know, on their, on their side too. So there's so many different ways to answer, um, these questions in your own style. Well, and yeah, and in our seller survey, we found out that sellers get so upset that you ask for price reductions only two weeks in. And again, that comes from education. That means either mm -hmm. they forgot, which um, uh, one of our clients has a saying for uh, convenient seller amnesia, um, right. Right. <laughs> where they forget everything you painstakingly told them. Um, that's why these uh, price reductions are so important for you to go ahead and have them on your MLS change forms already initialed off with the date and the prices. You don't even have to contact them again. You just reduce it and send them an email saying it's been reduced. Um, but sellers were, uh, that was one of the things that they complained about in that survey. They did not care for it at all. Um, agents come in and ask them within two weeks. So ask for it ahead of time so you, that you can educate, and um, this is a great strategy for you. Okay, so we have one last bonus. Um, that uh, we want to add as far as a listing objection. And um, neither one of us has prepared an answer for this, so I'm just going to blindly ask Kimberly and let's see what she says. Um, the one down the street sold for, uh, you know, 325000 Our house is way nicer, Kimberly. Your house is certainly nice, Jenny. Um, I, I can't imagine their house looking any nicer than yours because you've done a great job preparing. A lot of times, um, the price that the house sold for is almost solely based on square footage. So sometimes some of the some of the improvements that you've made, we may not, you know, we may not um, be able to recoup all of your money, but. Um, I think the price that I suggested would be would be a, a great price for you. And if we do um, price your house at you know the five to ten percent below market value, we're going to attract a whole um, slew of buyers because buyers are always looking for a bargain. We're going to attract a lot more people, and hopefully we can um, um, the the. Hopefully that will result in a multiple offer situation like I was telling you about before. So you remember the one I was telling you, um, 22 showings, four offers, a contract and a backup contract, and 21000 over list price. So we just need to be real careful how we price your house today. So hopefully we can create that buyer frenzy and get you more money than what you're asking for. Okay. I love it. And um, this is a question that's asked all the time. What you could even do if you had your iPad or your laptop with you is, let's pull up that house. Because mm -hmm. what people hear through the grapevine a lot of times is not necessarily the truth. And you can end up showing everything about that house. Let's take a look now. Okay, I understand that your house probably is way nicer. It looks to me, based on the information that we have right here, that that one had, you know, um, 625 square feet more. Oh, and look at that. The kitchen has been upgraded to um, granite. Oh, they have brand new flooring in it. Look at that. So mm -hmm. you can end up giving a lot more information if you had your materials there so that you could pop that up um, and really show them uh, reality. So great, Kimberly. That was a really good answer. And, y'all, I hope that you enjoyed this because our answers show our clients um, our expertise, and you don't ever want to be stumbling over um, answers for this. You see how she didn't even stutter whenever I asked her that question because she knows to expect it. She's been asked that question over and over. All of these 21 questions that we went over today, you're probably asked in one meeting every single time. <laughs> so, 
I hope that you will listen to this over and over and um, get your answers down the way that you want them. And, you know, it is not too juvenile to write out the answers and read them back to yourself in your style over and over and over so that when somebody asks you, it just comes out without you having to think. Um, anything you want to add, Kimberly? Um, I think it was I think it was a great call. Um, the one thing I I do want to just touch on is just to make sure that you educate your clients, like we were talking about from the start. So scripts are very very important, but the um, education process is just as important. Like one thing I like to say when I go on listing appointments, um, if your house is priced right, then we'll have a lot of showings. Um, if we don't have any showings, then that means we have a pricing problem. If we have a lot of showings but no offers, that means there's a problem with the condition of your house. And sometimes price is the great negotiator. So when you say condition of their house, their house may be sitting on a hill. You may not be talking about um, ugly carpet. But I like to let them know exactly what to expect, just like with the price reductions. Do the price reductions automatically up front. And let them know every seven to ten showings should result in an offer. So, um, you know, that helps eliminate a lot of things. If they're turning showings down, if, if their house isn't show ready when, you know, when appointments come. I think education is absolutely key, and that's where you can really shine and show your expertise there. And, um, and having that up front will eliminate a whole lot of objections in the weeks to come. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, and uh, good luck on overcoming all of your listing objections this week. Thanks so much for joining us, and we will get the replay out to you shortly. Thanks, Kimberly. Thank you, Jenny.